Hey creator, welcome back or welcome if you're new here to the Mindful Creators podcast. I am Fem, I'm a knitter and crocheter and I make this two weekly podcast where I chat with you about everything I'm working on, uh, what is going on in my life, uh, updates from my community group because I'm very active in the community space here for knitters and crocheters. So join me along in my second, in my 12th podcast. <laughs> well, that didn't go right. Okay, as I said, my 12th podcast. By the way, if it looks a little bit dark um, of artificial lighting in here, it is because it has been raining so much here in the Netherlands. So I have like two big soft boxes here, so it, it looks a little bit good. Um, it's just very dark out here today and uh, we have to deal with it. It's okay, we'll make it work. Some other updates. Oh, I cut my hair. I hope you like it. Uh, I think there's like this part, uh, like how many inches, like four inches off at least. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit shorter, but I did it myself and I think it, it, it worked out quite well. And uh, talking about appearance, I have like this thing, um, it's like a dry patch spot, but it cracks open. So when I talk, so if you see something in my mouth, you know, you know why. But you've seen me with cold sores, you've seen me with pimples, you'll be fine. I'll be fine. So yeah, we, we just have to deal with it. Um, let's start immediately, immediately with the question of the day. If you're new here, we always start with the question of the day of these tea bags. Uh, we have this Dutch tea bag brand or tea brand that has like these conversation starters on these uh, tea bags. And today's question is, which hobby that you did uh, when you were younger would you like to do again? Okay, I have a good one for this because uh, I've actually always have been a dancer. And I don't think I've ever talked about it on here. But um, I am not dancing at the moment. I stopped taking classes about two years ago because I moved to another city. I have done a few classes last summer to try out a new dance school, but it's expensive. So <laughs> that's why I'm not having classes at the moment. But I would really love to. But um, in specific, the hobby that I would like to try again is ballet. Because I started dancing when I was six. And the first six years I did ballet and I actually uh, quit uh, right at the moment before they got went on point shoes so I haven't done that whole part but yeah it's 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 a cool school sport it's hard it is absolutely hard you have to be so strong for it so like it's definitely deceiving if you look at it you're like oh it looks so 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 natural but it is hard but really cool so yeah I would definitely want to try ballet once again and I want to just dance in general. I've danced for my sixth year, from when I was six until when I was 23, 24. So it's just in my core, I need to dance, I need to dance. And I want to do it again really, really soon. Having had the question of the day, we are just going to dive into my bibs because I have a few exciting ones. Uh, last week's, or last week's, last podcast, I told you that I was only knitting on one thing. I had a monogamous two weeks of knitting. Like, how is that possible? But um, I can already assure you this one wasn't monogamous. I worked on one, two, three, four, five things. Uh, I have a link here with me. I have one really exciting one that you probably have seen or in the thumbnail or in the title. And oh, I'm just so excited about this one. If you, uh, maybe, no, you probably don't know because I haven't really shared it anywhere except in my community group, the Wine for Creators Clubhouse, which I will tell you a little bit more about it soon or later in this video. But yeah, I've been making socks for my boyfriend. And it, today, the, the day that this video um, comes out, is his birthday. So what is it? March 16th. Today is, is March 14th, if I'm correct. I'm not done yet, I'm almost done. But it has been so fun to work on this project secretly. And I will tell you a bit more about it. So let me show you the sock, because I have one sock finished and one sock is about two-thirds finished. Um, this is the first sock that I can show you. These are the Petty Harbor socks. I don't know the, the designer uh, on top of my head. I didn't make any notes of this podcast. I just went straight in it. So I'll put it in the screen. So the Petty Harbor socks. It is a free pattern or reverie. I have fluff flying around <laughs> everywhere. But a free pattern and it is a broken rib stitch. As you can see here. It's like a three by one kind of broken rib stitch, and it is so fun to make. It is so fast to make, so fast and so fun. 
Yeah, I'm really, really loving them. Um, let me tell you a bit more about the reason why I'm making him these socks. So uh, the moment I started crocheting or knitting, mostly when I started knitting, I was like, okay, I want to make you something. Please let me make you something. And he was like, no, you are just going to work on things for yourself. Also because uh, the first sweater that I cast on was a gift knit. Was way too ambi ambitious. It is not done. <laughs> Still not done. <laughs> I've really touched it. But um, I think that clears it up. I am very much a person that wants to give to others, people close to me, uh, spe specifically. And if you would have said already, then I want to have a sweater. I was like, okay, I'm gonna get yarn. I'm gonna make you a sweater. But he was like, no, you're just going to make things for yourself first, and eventually, you can make something for me. But lately, he has been asking a bit more about that sweater. He's like, am I ever gonna get that sweater? And how many years do I have to wait for the sweater? <laughs> Jokingly, of course. And a few friends of mine also have been, have made sweaters for their boyfriends, a few of my close friends, and he saw them, he was like, hmm, I think he gets more interested in it. So um, a few weeks ago, he again started like, okay, um, still a sweater somewhere? <laughs> And I was like, yeah, yeah, I, I will definitely want to make something for him. But he's super picky, like extremely picky um, somehow. And that's fine because I want him to have something that he loves. And I was like, okay, um, I would like to make something for his birthday, but a sweater in a few weeks, definitely not going to happen, especially not a men's size. And I remembered I had these skeins of yarn. so. If, you, if you've been following me for a little while, you might re recognize these. I have bought uh, some Lana Gosa Melovite hand dyed merino yarn a little while ago. I had three skeins uh, of three different colors. So I had uh, this pinkish orange one that I used for my Easy Peasy socks. You might remember that one. I have a blue eggplanty color that I haven't used yet. And I had this one, this gray to green color. And the moment I bought this yarn, he was like, okay, this is my favorite of the of the three that you bought. And I was like, okay, no down, no down, remember. <laughs> I'm always like a person, if someone says they like something, I try to remember. I, I'm not, not always remember, but I try to. So a few weeks ago, I was looking at my yarn session. I was like, hmm, I, I've been getting quite fast at, so at socks. Why not just make him a pair of socks? So I did. And I made this sock in one and a half days what this is so fast and so fun and i think it is because of the four repeat pattern so there are four different rows that you do you do a a normal knit row then you do a three knit one purl normal knit row and then one by one purl and it just just it just flies off the needles so yeah i've been uh, working on it uh, one and a half day for this one super fast could do it in between things when he was at office and i was just at home uh, but I only had one skein of yarn <laughs> and um, even though the skeins that I had say they are 50 grams, they are 60, I still didn't have enough for two socks of course. So I went to my local yarn store, I, I succeeded as you can already see, went to my local yarn store Wolplein and I uh, knew they had a big sale going on and I bought this in the sale in December I think. December, November, some December. And I was I knew that it, a week before I went, uh, this was still in stock and on sale. So I was like, okay, please, please, please let it still be there. If you have watched my last video, you already noticed that they still had it. And um, it's quite a good color match also. So this is how far I am on the second sock. I did the leg, the heel, or kind of leg heel. And I am now at the foot yeah i think i think i've done like five let me see i need to do like 12 repeats or something so i did like i don't know i i cannot i can't do math at the moment but i i think i only have to do like four more repeats for the foot and then the toe and then this one is finished too i don't think i will block them i don't think it's necessary um yeah these are great the pattern by the way doesn't have this this heel in here it has a normal um how do you call it? Heel, heel flap? But I don't enjoy making heel flaps. I really do not. And I know that he's not going to wear these outside, probably um, being picky as he is. These will probably be house socks, but I think he will like them. And so I changed the heel to a boomerang heel or a German short row heel. It's the same. And it was really fun to do. And I think it looks quite neat for my first 
I always think that these are gaps in here, but there it's like super nice and flush. Same here. Uh, there were some holes here, some gaps, and I just stitched them close. So I think it's fine. I was a little bit worried at first about the length, if it was long enough, but I think with some stretching, I, my socks really get looser when I wear them, and so I think it will be fine. He has size 44. I don't know what it is in American sizes, to be honest. Uh, 44 Europe size. I think I think it will be fine. I um, took my shoes and put them against his shoes, <laughs> so to see if I could measure it somehow. And I think I think it will be fine. Maybe a little bit snug, but they will get looser, of course. But yeah, funny story. Um, <laughs> I've been working on this one. I, I haven't I didn't have the time to work on it so much because um, I'm testing for the Mindful Creators Clubhouse and it takes over my whole life and it is completely fine But I don't have much time to work in it during the day. I make some time about an hour here and there uh, I had some time this weekend because some friends of mine were here visiting some of my knitting friends that you would know by now maybe uh, Yasmin and Heike Claudia couldn't come, that was so sad. But uh, we were knitting this weekend and my boyfriend was out of the house and I was able to knit on this too. Didn't do much, but could do a little bit. But yesterday, yesterday I was knitting at home um, in the, uh, the afternoon. Yeah, so the last few hours before I knew he would come home, about two hours. He gets home normally at 6.15. The man came home in half an hour early <laughs> and I was still knitting on this. So the door opened. And I, oh my god, I jumped off the couch. I was like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. I was like, don't come in, don't come in. And I was shaking, my, my hands were like shaking after. But I think, I think I saved myself. I don't hope he um, is like now, hmm, is she making something? I, I, I don't think he, he's not really the overthinker that I am. Let's, let's just say it like this. Like if I only see like a package of a, of a gift with Christmas, for example, I can already know what it is. And I don't even purposely think about it, but I digress. Um, yeah, I don't think he knows still, but I cannot wait to see his reaction because I don't know. I just like him. I think he will like it. I think he will like the gesture, 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 gesture. Some English words still are difficult. And I love how they turn out. I really like the look. They are nice and loose. As I said, I think these will be house socks for him. He does have quite a high instep, um, which could uh, have some could could cause some problem with uh, the heel that I chose. But I think also because of the ribbing, I think it will be fine. So yeah, <laughs> almost done. I um I will finish this, of course, within the next two days or within yeah today, Tuesday, Wednesday. I still have two days, and uh, I will show them next time when they are finished. Because yeah, we live in the same house, so I can just grab them from somewhere. And I'm so excited about giving these, just these to him. I think it's just, I don't know, I really like that I was able to make him something. Um, and that it is turning out so nice. So yeah, that is my sock whip for my boyfriend's birthday. My secret birthday gift project, if you will. And um, I've been enjoying this a ton, like so much. That's the first whip that I have for you. Let's go into my Monday sweater. This is the whip that I was working on for last podcast and that I worked on monogamously for two weeks. I don't even I don't even understand myself, but I, I did. I did really work on one thing for two weeks, which not that not never really happens, but that does say a lot about my enthusiasm for it. Enthusiasm. Enthusiasm for it. Words. My yarn is already rolling over the ground and nodding up. But yeah, my Monday sweater by Petite Knit. I am going to try it on for you. I put some uh, try it on two wing already in here. But let me first show just what my progress was. So last time, if you remember, I did the uh, yoke and one full sleeve. And I already said, okay, I, I don't think I will be working as much on it uh, next two weeks. Uh, and I probably will have the sleeve finished. And what did I do yesterday? I finished the sleeve. So this is the body until uh, now. And the sleeves are both finished. So I, uh, what I like to do is I like to keep the cable on, so not bind off yet. Because I'm quite tall, uh, my arms are always, like the arms of my sweaters most of the times are a little bit too short. If they don't block long enough, I can still add a little bit of length. But I don't think I have enough yarn for that. Um, and I think it will be fine. But yeah, 
This is a really nice raglan pattern. It is a quite a simple kind of, no, it's not simple, it is a staple kind of uh, sweater. It is worked with a fingering weight and a mohair, which makes it a DK, I think. Uh, I'm using this hand dyed mohair, as you can see, in one of my cakes from Abmetska. This is a really nice white and gray, it's not a speckle, I don't know how you call it, but uh, this white and gray, really nice cloud looking yarn. Uh, and I pair it with this mohair from Do Drops. It is Drops Kit Silk in the color chalk. So yeah, um, it's really nice. Let me just try it on for you. So I have it on here for you. It almost looks like I have a finished sweater already. Oh, there is so much mohair flying around. That is one thing I don't uh, enjoy too much. Or I don't, it isn't super annoying or something. But um, it is flying around every time I put it on. And it sticks into my lashes sometimes and eyebrows and everything. But um, <laughs> this is the sweater. So it is really, really nice, as you can see here. I, I don't know, I love this color. I'm really happy with the color that I chose. So I bought this yarn at a yarn fair. Let me just put it on. Um, I didn't have my glasses on for most part of the day and I did a little bit of knitting, then I looked away and I was like, okay, I can't see anything anymore. So let me just put them on quickly. But I bought this yarn at the yarn uh, fair that I have linked here. I've been there with my friends. I've locked it so you can see it on there. Uh, the Edmesca yarn. A really nice store. But yeah, uh, it's, it's beautiful yarn. One thing that I don't enjoy too much that I've talked about last podcast is that there are flecks of bright, bright blue in here. I don't know if you can see it here, but there is one. Um... Yeah, there are multiple in here, like scattered throughout the sweater and it looks like it shouldn't be there. So that's a bit weird. My goodness, I'm overheating already. So yeah, it is warm. Uh, this pattern normally has a bit more ease. Um, as you can see, it's quite fitted on me. That is because I just made the smallest size um, because I didn't want to buy four skeins. And I don't mind my sweaters being a little bit more form fitted, mostly on the bust or like the body part. Because as you can see here, I do have quite some ease here, like not on the bust uh, necessarily, but I know for the body it will have some more ease and it doesn't have to be super oversized for me with this sweater. I think this looks good too. That is the fun thing about knitting, of course. You can just personalize everything uh, to your taste. But yeah, this is a size extra small. I'm a bust uh, 93 centimeter, if I'm correct. And this fits fine. My gauge is almost perfect. Uh, I haven't blocked my swatch <laughs> and I'm working with superwash so it could uh, stretch a bit but that is not a problem in this case because I would like to have my sleeves longer as you can see uh, like they could be a good length uh, like like bracelet length when you roll them up a little bit uh, but I think I would prefer to have them a little bit more like here I just like my just just not like not super on the thumb, but like almost on the thumb, you know? I, I think people who have long arms, they know the feeling of never having sweaters this length. <laughs> but yeah, I hope, I think it will stretch to that length and then I can still hike them up a little bit if I want to. But I'm loving it a lot. I'm loving the detail of the, um, this is a 12 centimeter uh, rip, one by one rip. I did choose to just keep it just a normal rip, rip, not make it twisted, because I think I like the look for it on this sweater. Otherwise it will be very obvious. Um, color, same thing, also one by one. And the ribbing of the body will also be one by one. But here I have a little bit of a problem, I think. Because um, I have three skeins of this hand dye jar. So 300 gram, which is about, do I say that correctly? 1200 meters. Yeah, I think, I think that's it. The pattern says I should be fine. However, um, I do make things a little bit longer normally, of course, because I'm tall, I'm 5'9". Uh, I did my calculations and I used 46 grams of yarn for this sleeve. I already had quite a bit of uh, yarn in here and I calculated that I would have 184 grams left. However, <laughs> I um, started on the body again. I like to do the sleeves first and the body with my yarn and I um, weighted what I had left. So I have two full skeins and nine grams left for, um, I'm doing helical knitting. So nine grams left from this 
sleeve. I don't know which one of the two it was, probably this one. And then um, I had two more cakes. The cakes together weighed 100 gram, almost exactly. They weighed 60 gram separately. <laughs> Did I, does anyone ever have this? I, I have this quite a few times. Maybe my um, skill is not exact enough, but so if I'm lucky, I still have 120 grams. If I'm not, I have only 100 grams left. And as you can see, I still have quite a bit to go. So I would like to have it until there. Will I make it? That's the question. Um, so yeah, that is a little bit of a dilemma. No, it's not a real dilemma, I have no choice, but if I really need to, I can take out this ribbing and make it smaller, but I, li I like the detail, so I don't really want to. I don't want to have the sweater too cropped, I want to have it wearable. Maybe it will stretch a ton, maybe that will be fine, but we will see that in the next episode of the podcast, probably. <laughs> it's flying around in here. I Oh, it's also my tea. <laughs> I'm more wearing my tea. I don't find this uh, shedding too, too much while I'm working on it, but... Of course, it isn't, hasn't been blocked, it hasn't been washed yet, so it will be a little bit more flying around. But yeah, I love this sweater. A few more things about it. Uh, it's top down, as you can see. Raglan, it has a two, rag, uh, two or three? How many stitches are in between here? I think three stitch in between, which I really like, makes a big band. Uh, it has short rows in the back, which I really like too, because Makes the neck a little bit higher. Yeah, it's just a really good staple. I, I will, I do see myself making this again, actually, in like a cobalt blue or like a super, super bright blue. I, I showed something in the last podcast. Oh, I would love that. It is also quite fast. Uh, it's four millimeter, but it goes quite fast somehow. So this is uh, a month of work of which I must say, I haven't really knitted a lot in the first week of these past two weeks. So. Let's say I worked on it for three weeks now, about three weeks, which is pretty decent, I think, for me, definitely, because I'm not a super, super fast knit. Like, I can knit fast, as in when I'm knitting, I'm quite fast, but I don't really finish my project really fast, if you if you get what I mean. I am going to take this off because I am warm. <laughs> it is quite warm for now. It is mostly because I'm just podcasting and um, I'm enthusiastic, I'm talking a lot, I am... I don't know, I just overheat during podcasts. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's my Monday sweater by Petite Knit. Um, loving it, I cannot wait to wear it eventually and have another sweater finished. I'm just so surprised by how fast this is going. Uh, one fun thing that I haven't shared yet, what I wanted to share also is because um, I'm prioritizing this whip quite a bit while also working on other things, but I now try to work on it daily. Even though it's only 15 minutes, I will try to work on it daily because we are doing a make-along in my community group. So um, if you know, or maybe don't, I will tell you about it. I have a new community group called the Mindful Creators Clubhouse and we are testing right now. So this is a membership group that I will launch in April, probably sorry, mid and April. Um, and it is a super, super, super fun group. So what is in the group are events. Um, we have a few fun events. We have a make-along, a monthly super casual make-along because I don't like working on a deadline. Uh, I know many of you don't either. I find it really important to have pleasure in the things that I'm working on. So for example, uh, this month's make-along is Whip It Up March. Kept it super simple because also because of the um, testing period is, it is already intense. So Whip It Up March is our make-along and we are working on one whip in specific or try to work on one whip every single day. I haven't done every single day yet because sometimes life gets in the way and you don't have time or you're tired. But I, what I really like um, about it is that I'm not prioritizing it more. And I get excited about ticking the day because I made some templates um, where you can show your before and after picture to really see the progress. I think that is really important sometimes too with knitting. It can sometimes feel like nothing is happening with having a picture before and then after. After a month, maybe you have your project finished or you see a lot of progress. And another template that I make is like uh, the daily ticking off template. And I oh, I love ticking off things, so I know many of you do too. Uh, and these templates, I will always make these templates for every event. They may look a little bit different. I also have like a notepad kind of version that you can print out or use on your iPad, uh, which I also really like that you can fill in. 
I will show you one from the testers. This is, that that will be fun. I will show one from the testers here. Uh, but yeah, it's just it's just a lot of fun, and we have been working on it together. Um, we have an online platform that we are in. Um, I will show you last week's video here. You can see a little bit more behind the scenes already. I showed you a bit about the platform that we're using. Um, everything is online, of course, because we are all over the world. But the make along, we have some channels that we are chatting in. There is one girl in specific that shows her progress every single day with a picture, which is so cool to see. She, I think she's on day four or five now and already is almost for splitting sleeves on a uh, really tiny needle. I think, yeah, I think it's finger away, tiny needle yarn, tiny needle yarn, tiny needle. Uh, project sweater project and it's just really fun to see together a little bit more about the group as i said we have events so this saturday we have our first community call we would actually have a community call last saturday but our guest speaker laura got sick um i think she has the vid i'm so sorry she is oh she's feeling terrible i was feeling for her so much but yeah we had to reschedule the uh, community call okay you know these things happen and I was actually able to uh, arrange a new guest speaker because Lauren wasn't available for this month. And our new guest speaker is Evie from Agilian Eve. You might know her from YouTube. She is quite big on YouTube and has some super fun videos. Uh, she is really has a lot of knowledge about spinning, about yarn in specific, the history of yarn. It's just, oh, I, I just cannot wait for a call. I had a small call with her yesterday, which was super, super fun. She really is the bubbly personality you see online. She really is that person. So um, check her out if you will, if you want. And she will be our guest speaker this first call in our tester group. Uh, I can't wait. Uh, other community or other, yeah, other events that we have. So we have a guest speaker slash community call. We do those together. We have a movie night, uh, which we actually rescheduled to last Saturday. If, I hope you can still follow. We had it actually for this Wednesday, but because we already had our agendas free for the Saturday, we uh, did our movie night then because, you know, I'm a big movies and series lover and I was like, okay, if others are also interested, let's do a movie night. We have been knitting, crocheting at the same time. It was super fun. Uh, I'll tell you in the, in the watching and reading part which movie we watched uh, or tell a little bit more about the movie. But it was Don't Worry Darling. Dang, that movie was good. It was, it was dark and it was intense, but it was good. But more about that later. But yeah, it's, um, it's been so fun. We had about a week and a half of testing now. And I don't know, I don't know about you. Uh, I have some people in, in my offline world that knit and crochet that I can talk with and I can also uh, catch up with in real life or not in real life, but in offline life, if you know. But I know a lot of you and also me in the beginning, uh, I didn't really have people in my life that I could knit, crochet, like chat with outside of the social media platforms, of course. And what we really realize in this group it is that it is just so much fun to be able to knit with the other people, uh, chat with them. Uh, if you've been to one of my community calls, it is like the community call, but then 10 times better, actually. Yeah, it is way better even. And I just love it. Uh, other people in the group are already super excited to have so many new friends this uh, testing period. They will stay a little bit longer. They have the opportunity to stay a little bit longer in the group. And yeah, I just have uh, 20 more knitting friends right now. And it's so fun. I love it. And I know the others do too. And I would love for you to have that too. Uh, so as I said, mid-April, mid and April, we will open. I will keep you up to date if you're interested. Um, I have a email uh, list, by the way. If you're interested, please go into that email list because I will also share a bit more there. If you're the person that like to have it in their inbox on paper, digital paper. <laughs> But yeah, it's, uh, it's been tons of fun. A lot of work, but a lot of fun. And I can't wait for you to, uh, to join eventually. But um, let's go into two more whips because I have two more. <laughs> and I will start with a sock that you've seen before. No, I have three more whips. Sorry, I have three more whips. Let's go into a sock. I won't talk too long about it, but I did a little bit of work on it when we were visiting family. Uh, we have family living away from my boyfriend uh, that live three hours away, so it's always a good knitting opportunity. This is the, now I have to say it correctly, the Nordic Socks by, don't remember the name, uh, put it in the screen here, the Nordic Socks. What is the name again? 
I don't remember. It's a free pattern or reverie too. I just love my free sock patterns. Uh, you know this by now. This is an after tot heel sock. I have never done an after tot heel. So you see the brown line here. That is where my heel will be. And I think I'm almost finished with the foot part. I just did a little bit. So I have my progress keeper in here. Just a stitch marker. And this is what I did in a little bit of the car ride. I did some other things and was also trying to keep my uh, boyfriend uh, like, how do you say that? Awake is not a good word because he was perfectly awake, but a three hour car ride. You need to keep each other, you know, uh, hyped and uh, entertained. So I'm the biggest entertainer in a car ride, for sure am. So <laughs> that was, was also what I was busy with. Did a little bit of knitting. And these are also really fun. Uh, I'm making them with Drops Nord, just some yarn that I had in stash. And uh, color work is this, stranded. It isn't my prettiest color work I've done yet, but it is a really nice and fun pattern. And it's really easy, understandable. I did make a mistake here in the back, as you can see. Realized that later, a little mistake, but um, they look really cool. Maybe if you're a gamer, you recognize this because uh, I think these are inspired by, oh my gosh, what's the game again? Oh, I cannot come up with a name. I'm, I don't play the game, I've never played it. Animal Crossing, yeah, Animal Crossing, so. These are inspired by socks uh, you see in Animal Crossing. So that's really fun. If you're, if you're a fan, I will link my patterns below that I'm working on, uh, or my reverie pages that I'm working on. You can find them there. Really fun. Uh, we'll be working on them slowly, just when I feel like it. This really is a project that I just have on the side because I like to have some socks on the needles. I don't even have them on there because my boyfriend's socks are on my needles now. But yeah, these are just fun to work on them now and then. My Nordic socks. Let's go into a crochet rip. I'm going to throw it a little bit faster now because I don't want to make it did one and a half hour podcast because you know I'm very good at talking <laughs> and talking a lot. This is a little crochet project. Also a very casual thing that I just wanted to try out. Um, I'm a big fan of Tony Lipsy, of Tony from TL Yarncrafts. I love her. Absolutely do. She is amazing and she has so many fun patterns, so many good videos, so many good tutorials. She was definitely one of the persons, the people that I um, that I like watched the videos in the beginning when I started crocheting. And one of her stitches, or like not her stitches, but one of the stitches that she explained uh, that I was always a bit more intrigued about to do uh, is a linen stitch. And I actually started on something uh, and I don't know what it will be, but I think it will be a pillowcase. So this is how far I got. Let me show you the, the right side. It is not perfect. As you can see here, it's a bit wonky. Um, also because this is my join part. But yeah, this is uh, just something I'm making up on my own. I am using some acrylic uh, yarn that I have in stash from when I started crocheting. I really only bought acrylic, but I don't love it for... Um, like wearable, so this is also acrylic. I just don't don't love it. I don't love to knit with it. I don't love for wearables, but I think it's perfect, absolutely perfect for me for uh, accessories. Please don't get like I say that you cannot wear uh, or use acrylic for wearables because I've run their own preference. I just don't prefer it for myself. But I think for me it is perfect for accessories. So yeah, I'm just, I just started making this stitch. Um, funny thing, I actually started doing that as a little in-between break when I was working on my capstone, I think. Uh, that break, 15-minute uh, breaks, uh, ended up to be a one and a half hour break <laughs> because I was watching Tony Air videos and um, crocheting. So yeah, haven't done much on it, but I just, it was just a fun, or was, it is just a fun in-between thing. I just have it on the couch and I can grab it when I want to, when I don't really, feel like knitting and also funny thing or funny thing fun thing nice thing is that uh it's not hurting my my body too much so um i actually had two tennis elbows or sometimes they still come up uh some doctors told me that it is a chronic thing now i just have to be wary of it uh, be careful with it and um because uh, of the tennis elbows crocheting is something that fires it up really quickly in the beginning but i've been doing so much better now and i will tell you soon uh, how that come how did how did that come uh, why i don't really have that much pain anymore i want to do a video about it because uh, it's just it's just nice maybe it can help some others but i still can i finally can crochet a bit again 
don't want to do it for hours and hours on end but yeah so this is uh, just uh, probably will be a pillowcase as you can see i have those pillows there they are 50 by 50 centimeters i think it will be really easy to get these to 50 by 50. Um, don't know uh, if I want to put them on like something like that or maybe perhaps I have some old, old pillows Maybe I can rip out the filling. We don't use those pillows. I have them laying for the filling and fill these with them I have no idea how much I will be working on them, but it's just it's just a nice no pressure crafty uh, project knitting no crochet project. Oh, I'm all over the place. I'm so sorry. Uh, if you want to know a specific which yarn I'm using, I am using yarn from the Zeeman, which is a Dutch store, which is not a yarn store, but they sell yarn and they're quite big in the yarn, acrylic yarn thing. It is, I think it's Julia, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I think these are the same weights. It's quite easy to fill them to find out which weight they are. I think they are Julia. As I said, not 100% sure. It is fine yarn. It is really cheap. Uh, perfect if you're starting out and you want to use some acrylic, so definitely recommend them. Uh, for the duchies i have made a video like complete even before i had the idea of the mindful creators but it's still on this channel because i thought why not i will link it here it is in dutch um but it is about my yarn stash which one will i do yeah i'll do my yarn stash video you see a lot of uh, zeeman yarn in there so if you're interested you can watch that one then uh my last whip that i worked a little bit on and I've shown this one before, of course, um, but this is my easy gusset wrap shawl thing. It's, again, don't know <laughs> the designer. I'll put it in the screen. I'm so sorry. I didn't really uh, prepare this one. I was just like, I'm just going in it. Casual. Spontaneous. Something like it. This is a uh, shawl wrap pattern for a one skein wrap shawl. I don't know what, what I should call it. Should I just call it a shawl? I don't know. Um, I think I'm halfway, so it will be quite big. It won't be super uh, big width-wise, but it will be quite long. This yarn is gorgeous. Let me show it to you. Um, if you've been watching longer, again, uh, you know this yarn. I've got it from my friend Dara. She's also on Instagram, on Instagram, on YouTube too, I mean to say. Um, a great crocheter, cross-stitcher. She is knitting a little bit. I don't know if she's, if she's still knitting, but I, I probably will hear it from her. But yeah, uh, she sent me this beautiful skein of yarn. Oh, look at it. You just can keep looking at it. The skein doesn't look that pretty anymore because I've been working, of course, but... The different hues, tones of blue. It's just beautiful. And it works out beautiful too. So uh, this is a pattern that uh, uses different kinds of really simple stitches of which a lot of um, yeah knitting pulling mostly knit stitches as you can see there are different panels in here so some garter panels I have a hair hanging in here too uh, some garter panels then you have here some knits uh, with a little bit of garter then a big garter panel and again and then some knit together as you can see, that gives a fun see-through part. Then, yeah, it, it is just, they call it uh, different kinds of panels. And I just finished the last uh, row of this panel. I've been working on it during the movie night because this is a perfect mindless knit. You don't have to pay much attention. I do uh, recommend to use a stitch counter. So I have lots of them there. I have a little uh, clicker that, uh, that I can count my rows with, not a stitch counter, a row counter. And that's really nice because you don't really want to count back. I don't prefer that. Uh, makes it really easy. This was 30 rows of garter stitch and I, with the counter, I was perfectly uh, sure I had 30 rows. I counted it even before, but uh, it was perfect. So yeah, I did only this part during the movie night. I think I have about 100 plus stitches on a row now, so it doesn't go that fast anymore. But yeah. It's not really wearable right now, of course, but you can maybe see it a little bit. I think it's gorgeous. It's so beautiful. I've never had uh, a shawl like this. I will wear it a bit more like a scarf, probably. I never had shawls or wear really them, but I just really wanted to... It will be way bigger than this, but I really wanted to use this uh, skein because it's quite special to me. And I wanted to use it for like a project to let the yarn shine. I didn't want to make socks with them. 
um, I thought that this looked a little bit more. So yeah, I think this color suits me a bit. Yeah, it makes me, I'm super pale, so everything makes me pale again, I guess, but it quite suits my hair color. And I just can't wait. And I think it will be a really nice, um, this is not the way to do this, uh, a really nice spring slash autumn kind of, it's all up in there, uh, shawl, 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 scarf, um, quite lightweight. Yeah, I think I have uh, maybe 40 grams left, maybe it was a 100 gram skein. And I'm telling about the yarn, but I'm not even telling about the yarn. So this is by 6 and 7 fibers, uh, this is the base alfalfa. And I think the color is called Penelope, but I couldn't really see it on their side anymore uh, last time I looked. But they have beautiful colors either, either way. This is a mix of merino wool, cashmere, and I think a little bit of nylon, but I'm, I think that's that's the, how it's set up, but I'm not so sure. But this is just my, my mindless knit. Love it, my needles on, on here because it's four millimeter and they are on my Monday sweater. So I'm just switching around when I want to work on them. This is also just like a comfort project. I'm not rushing anything. Um, maybe I want to work on it a little bit more after my Monday is uh, done, but unknowing me, I'll probably already have another sweater or another big project on the needles. But yeah, and it's just really fun. And what I said, it reminds me of my friend. And it's just nice. I love the color. It's so beautiful. She knows me so well with the color, color choice. This, that is my easy gozed shawl wrap scarf. Whatever you want to call it. Last but not least, like knitting yarn wise, I have some yarn to show you. So I went to my local yarn store last week. You've seen it in the last week's video if you've watched it. And I bought a little bit of yarn because I just couldn't, I couldn't leave it there. And it was on sale and I will show you what it is. So I have two of the same yarns, but in different colors and I have different quantities too. This is the first one. This yarn is from Lang Yarns and it is the Alpaca Super Light. And please focus. Yes. It is really, really nice. And I will show you why I, uh, I got it. I, as I said, I don't mind the mohair too much, but yeah, Alpaca is softer. I think there are not many people that are n like not sensitive at all for mohair. I think everyone feels a little bit more if you compare it to Alpaca, I think. And the fun thing is of this yarn, well, don't look at my, my fitness hands. <laughs> the fun thing of this yarn is because it is an alpaca super light, it is thinner than a normal like burst alpaca. So if you know the burst, uh, burst alpaca silk from Drops, this is definitely thinner. I will grab one because then you can really see the difference. Um, because it is much thinner, I think it is a great mohair uh, substitute. The, it is 25 grams, 199 meters. Most mohairs that I've seen are 120 meters. So it is not far off. And uh, let me just, before I grab the other one, it is 54% alpaca, 24% polyamide, uh, nylon, they say it's the same, and 22% 20, 20, merino fine. Yeah, wool. Well, it is beautiful. Let me grab one of the uh, alpaca silk, burst alpaca silk, to see the difference. So I just grabbed a burst alpaca silk from my mom's gift knit uh, that I'm holding double for a cumulus blouse. Let me just show this in uh, up close first. As you can see here, it's quite a bit thicker. Uh, mostly the core is thicker. So if I hold them next to each other, at first you think, oh, but this is quite the same. I thought that uh, too. Let me just show them to you. But you can clearly see that there is less fluff on the gray, brown, beige, what is it? Uh, one than the uh, burst alpaca silk. That won't really work like this, I think. What uh, really looks thinner is the fluff is a little bit less and uh, the core also feels thinner. I almost feel like the core of the burst alpaca silk is a two ply or like a three, four ply. And um, the one of the alpaca super light is like a two ply, not a one, I think, but I think a two. So yeah. I think it will be a fine thing for a substitute mohair. It is still a little bit thicker than mohair. Let's be let's be honest, but I think it will do quite.
quite nicely. Maybe your fabric will be a little bit more dense, but you can play around with gauge and with needle size and everything for it. Um, but I got four of these. I have four of these um, and I don't really know what I want to make with them. Not yet, but I think I would like to keep them for something like a vest pullover. But yeah, I bought these just to have in stash because this color was really pretty and um, it maybe washes me out a little bit. So that's why I wouldn't make a whole sweater with it. But I think for a vest cardigan, no, no, for a vest um, pullover, I think it will be fine. And I thought it was great because it was also a steal. It was a good deal. Um, they were about five euros full price and they were half price. So pretty good if I may say so myself. And I have another one. Let me show that to you. So the other color that I have is this one. And this is right up my alley, you know, by now. This is this beautiful bluish purplish uh, color. Yeah, it looks... In different lighting it looks a bit different. It is definitely more blue than purple, but it looks a bit lavender-esque uh, on screen. Uh, in real life it's a bit more blue. And I have quite a few skeins. Let me grab them. I thought it would be fun to show them all. Just show them all. So, <laughs> I have seven... Oops. Seven skeins. I should have seven. That's really difficult to hold with it, two hands. But yeah, I have seven. <laughs> and the reason why I have seven is because I would like to make a full garment with only these yarns. So nothing uh, together, like holding two of these together, but nothing else. There is a sweater by Kadri that I don't know the name of at the moment, but a friend of mine made it and she was like, okay, this will be perfect for it. And I really like it. Uh, that is something that is on my mind, but there are also other things. I've just been looking around. Um, I just, I would like to make a full sweater with this. I have uh, many of these colors in my closet. I know they, I like them, uh, that I will wear them. And maybe something like a bit more lightweight kind of sweater will be nice. It will be warm, of course, because it's alpaca. Um, but I think it will be fine. Uh, yeah, you could also make um, a cloud bow. Is it a cloud bow? Or is it a ghost whisperer? I think both of these could be made with only mohair. This is not mohair, of course, but could be a substitute for it. I think a friend of mine also made the cloud bow, I think, with only two skeins of mohair. So you could make it with this too. But I'm excited for these. If you have any um, recommendations, please let me know. Um, I will also post, as I said, I post all the links of the patterns that I'm working on, some are pages, but I'll also post my all over Ravelry page, so you can also send me a message there, or send me some patterns, I don't know how Ravelry works with sending things, but you could if that works like that. Love to get the, to become friends on there. Love to stalk others there, favorites list. <laughs> but yeah, these are beautiful, I like them a lot, um, and again, this was... Okay, I bought this yarn, I bought the other four skeins, and I bought the one skein for the socks, and together they was 35 euros. So I think that is pretty decent, because this is a full garment, that other one could be a garment uh, without sleeves then. And I have a, a one sock, so 35 euros for three and a half garments. Pretty good, I would say. But the yarn, that is it. Also, if you were wondering if it itches at all, uh, it doesn't at all. It is super soft. No itch anywhere to find. Wow, we are getting towards the end of the podcast. Uh, a lot of whips, uh, one new thing, um, some projects that you've seen a little while ago and I'll see you again. I'm, I'm excited about my whip pile at the moment. I really am excited about my Monday sweater. I just love working on it. I, I think uh, this is the first standard kind of sweater. No, it's not true. I make an accumulus blouse, but that one, oh, that's a pain, that one. I just don't enjoy it. It is uh, so much work, but I will, I will grab it again. I will definitely will. I have, a, I have a quite a good break from it right now, so I'm, I'm ready to work on it again. So I will pick that up when my Monday is finished, maybe earlier already. And yeah, I have some fun things in here and some future things I should just saw from the skin that I bought. So I, I'm set for now. I want to make some summer things. I still have this cane, uh, the hand dyed yarn from the craft fair too, that I bought also, as the, also at the Abnesca stand um, for a summer top. So yeah, I, I'm looking forward to what uh, is coming. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are too. Let's go into watching and reading. Uh, I haven't really been reading that much. So um, I'm still reading for of class, doing the tandem read uh, from Tower of Dawn and Empire of Storms. 
loving the town tandem but i haven't really read um much the last two weeks so won't talk too much about it watching i have some fun things that we watched so first uh don't worry darling we have seen the movie with the movie night at our clubhouse the movie oh my goodness i had it on my list for quite a while already it is pretty dark it was darker than i expected i will try to explain it a little bit to you i'm not the best at it but i will try so it is about a couple that lives in the 50s and they live in a closed off kind of living community in the desert. Uh, their men work in the desert at the daytime. I don't really know what, what they kind of work, do for work, uh, but since it's the 50s, it's really old school still. Woman cooks, woman cleans, man works. However, uh, the main character is Florence Pugh. Pugh, Poe, Pugh, I don't know how you pronounce her last name. Harry Styles is her husband in this uh, movie. I love Harry Styles. I'm going to the show eventually. I think he's a good character, but it really is uh, Florence that does the work in this movie. As she starts to experience some weird things uh, happening, um, starts to doubt what is happening there. And I think, I don't want to say much more, but it is good. It is um, a bit dystopian, if you like that. It is different than I thought it would be. Um, it is a bit dark sometimes and it could be a little bit like it's not scary scary but um if you watch the whole movie you're like oh oh i get it oh so yeah really recommend that one and then i'm thinking about other things if you've watched anything else that i need to discuss in here not really no i think that's the one that i wanted to talk about so yeah um do i have some live things it's my boyfriend's birthday the day that you that this video comes out so uh, i love birthdays and really am a birthday person if there are not uh, decorations in the house on a birthday it's not a birthday for me so they need to be like balloons and things uh, i don't care how old i will get i will want i, I want balloons in the cake and uh, all of it so i'm doing that for him too i'm getting a really nice cake i will get that tomorrow so yesterday for you uh they're really really nice shop he doesn't know that yet too he, he joked that he wanted that and i was like okay no down no down <laughs> i'll get the cake for him um I have uh, another gift, I have the handmade socks, I'm uh, look, really looking forward to it. Then the weekend we have our community call, as I said, with Evie, also so much fun. We also have um, my boyfriend's and his sister's birthday that day, so because we had to reschedule uh, and I was like, okay, I don't care, I just need to reschedule. Uh, it is uh, not the most ideal thing for me, but we'll figure it out and it is fine. So we have the birthday and the daytime uh, at the family living three hours away. And then I might be in the car during the call. <laughs> I don't know. We have to figure it out. We will, we will find out how, how it will work. And other things, not really. I'm just working hard on the community. I'm working on my capstone very hard. I switched my um, capstone research from YouTube to the community because I was like, why would I put even more pressure on myself? And I am already doing research for the community. All the things that I'm doing, I already planned on doing. So uh, yeah, why not? So I did that and it is uh, better for me. So I'm happy with that. And yeah, it's just life. Uh, it's busy at the moment, it really is. But I'm enjoying it a lot and I'm doing it for you. And for myself too, of course, but for us, uh, for us together in this community. I have been loving it a lot and, uh, and I feel like I'm really finding my place here. So that is really nice. But yeah, I think that's it for this podcast. So I will close off with you. If you want to watch any of my other videos, you will see one pop up here. Uh, you can follow me by clicking this button. Uh, I have tons of fun videos planned. Um, like this video if you enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next one. So, bye creator. See you in the next one. <laughs>